marketplace with Charles on an 11-day tour of the Holy Land. Take the route Israel traveled to the Promised Land. Cross over the Red Sea and float on the Dead Seas, the lowest point on earth with amazing healing properties. Experience the vibe of Jericho and cruise on the Sea of Galilee to Capernaum, the hometown of Jesus. Visit the pools of Bethesda, Nazareth, Bethlehem, and many more. Walk where Jesus walked and see the Bible come alive. If beautiful memories and an enriched spirit is what you are looking for, then join us in taking Jesus to the marketplace. For more information, call us on plus two seven seven two one two three zero zero seven eight or email Israel at artofskincare.co.za. Welcome back to Marketplace with Charles, where your dreams are turned into reality. Marketplace is brought to you by Art of Skincare, the company that brings out the beauty in you, as well as Guisa Lodge from deep in the heart of Mabalingwe Nature Reserve. I am Ketiwe Pagati. On Marketplace, we empower as well as equip you with tools you need to achieve your entrepreneurial dreams. Each week, we bring to you insights from experts in different fields of business, from men as well as women of faith. Today, we meet up with an IT consultant, a speaker, as well as a learning and development consultant. We live in a technologically advanced world, but do we know and understand this technology? In a world run by technology, it is very important to understand how it functions. My guest today will discuss the above mentioned question and how we can identify opportunities within this industry. Welcome Mr. Mangaliso Jamani with me into your home, your hotel room or wherever it is that you are joining us from today. Mangaliso Jamani, hello and welcome to Marketplace with Charles. Hello, hello Ketiwe and um, thank you for having me and welcome to all our viewers. It's an absolute pleasure. So let's go right into it because I mean, technology 2020, I really want to hit the ground running. So tell us just in brief about your company and what do you do? In responding to the question and telling you about my company, I have to take you a little bit back um, in terms of why I started the company and also why I chose the name. So Jama Zizi is the name of the company and it is a combination of uh, two of my clan names, um, Jama and Zizi. You um, may have known uh, that there are Kosa people in our country that have uh, a long legacy, um, you know, where they come from and so forth. And so I thought in searching for a name for my company, I need to understand who I am and where I come from. And that's why I chose the name. Um, having said that, um, I, I have a very strong sense of um, wanting to help people, wanting to help human beings become better, unlock potential within every individual. Um, I found that many people struggle to make, um, make it in life or make it through life because they don't understand who they are and where they come from and what their gifts are. So my company exists to help people unlock their potential through their gifts, through their capabilities and combining their experience in education um, and in training and using that to then solve their problems. So that's the purpose why we, we have this company. But primarily what I've also learned in my experience um, throughout my career, it's about 20 years now, uh, mostly in the banking sector, I realized that many organizations try to solve problems through implementing technology. They implement new technology and new systems. In fact, one of the companies I worked for um, bought a system and they took about 10 years to implement the system after 27 billion rands worth of, of money spent, they still didn't solve the problem. You didn't see high profits, you didn't see high performance, you didn't really see them uh, growing as a company. In fact, they kept losing customers to other new players, new entrants, uh, people who are starting new companies. And so I took a step back and I asked myself, where is the real issue? And every organization will tell you the same, same thing. Uh, or there are common, three common things that they struggle with. It's people, okay. it's process, and it's technology. Um, so I sought to try and figure out what people problems might an organization have, what business processes could be problematic for an organization, and what technology issues do they have. So 
we exist to help individuals understand where they fit in and what they have and how they might want to approach um, solving whatever particular problems they have in the organization mm -hmm. and therefore choose the right technology. Some of us are clueless, we're thinking my phone is all there is to it. So just simplify the term technology itself. So I'll, I'll look into two examples and I think, you know, everyone might be able to identify with these. So the first one I'll talk about is fire. Um, if you think about it, fire gives us warmth, gives us uh, heat so we can cook, gives us um, light sometimes. And these are the needs we have as individuals. Now, the creation of fire in itself is technology. We are solving a problem. The problem is I feel cold, so I need heat. So I need something that can help me create the fire to get me warm. Or I need to be able to eat my meat. And to eat my meat, I need to cook it so that it becomes soft. Yes. So there's a problem, right? Um, so technology helps us to solve these problems and came in um, you know, the fire that was invented long ago, ages ago, yeah. um, eventually we have stoves now, eventually we have gas stoves, eventually we have ovens, eventually we have, you know, so all of these solutions to this problem are technology. The second example I'll give you is, imagine long ago we used to live in um, what today is, is called rural areas, mm -hmm. and your house is here and someone else's house is over there. Imagine if you had to communicate with them. We used to use smoke signals. Uh, we used to have birds that take messages uh, you know, to, to places. That in itself was not convenient. It was not effective, right? Mm -hmm. And we've invented phones. We, we invented telephones. And everybody remembers that, that telephone that you used to dial like this, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but today we have cell phones. Mm -hmm. And with a cell phone, you can speak to somebody who lives in America. Imagine how far America is from here. So the advent of technology is all about solving problems. And the problem that we were solving with the telephone system is communication. Mm -hmm. So again, technology is meant to help us make life simpler for us. By so doing, technology is buying us time. So it's giving us more time. Because every day of our lives, we are doing so many things. In fact, I even coined a, a term, I said, Technology helps us to move away from being human doings to becoming okay. human beings. So let's just say for argument's sake you had to have eight meetings regardless of how much time you would spend. Okay. And in the previous dispensation you would have um, these eight meetings over four days. Okay. But now you're having them over one day. How much time have you saved? How much time have you gained? Three days. In other okay. words, we are able to achieve more with technology given the amount of time we are given. Okay. So that in effect has bought us time. Um, for argument's sake, we used to travel to work, mm -hmm. uh, given this whole lockdown and COVID situation, we used to travel to work. That time you used to, to travel to work, um, arguably could be two hours of your day, is taken away by you traveling to work. But now you literally can start your day uh, immediately when you're at home and the two hours that you would have spent in traffic, you're now spending being more productive. So technology is helping you be more productive. So now there's this famous phrase that has come up yes. with technology, right? It was, I'll go back to your earlier example, um, technology of making a fire, matchstick, lighter, gas stove, and so forth, right? Now we in a, a catchphrase time when it comes to technology. I mean, most of, half the time we don't know what people mean when they say it. Mm -hmm. So you simplify the whole 4IR situation to us. How does technology narrow down to 4IR? Remember a time in the, when we were coming into the new millennium, year 2000, um, there was a phrase called Y2K, mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. year 2000, right? So it was a phrase that was coined, it was an acronym, and everyone had this buzzword that they were fixated to. And the worry back then was, in, in the change of time into the new millennium, what would happen is computers as they were designed would stop functioning. So the clock would reset. And if you had money in the bank, your money would be lost because the banking system will not be able to reconcile, right? Mm -hmm. So everyone was worried about what would happen when the clock resets. I remember in that time as a country, we were looking for technology skills, or, or we, were, we wanted to develop people who can speak the computer language. 
right? So people who can write programs, who can co communicate with computers, tell the computer, do not reset your time or your clock when it hits midnight, you know, mm -hmm. and it's changing to 2000. So, so a lot of banks, um, a lot of financial institutions, a lot of uh, different organizations, they hired more young people and they trained them up to be programmers. Fast forward to today, uh, for IR is the new phrase, right? Mm -hmm. Fourth Industrial Revolution. Yes. There are three revolutions that happened before this. Um, you know, uh, we, we, we come from the locomotive, uh, you know, creating trains in order to transport goods and services and so forth, um, to industrial age, uh, which is the third revolution where everyone that went to school was trained to be a doer of things. So we created labor and the economy was around uh, labor and hand, yeah. handmade stuff, right? Uh, but now 4IR is challenging us as human beings in a very different way. It's challenging systems in a very different way. It's a lot more data driven, right? Which is why you would hear that your data needs to be protected. Your data is important. You know, there's a protection bill that's been passed around data because your personal data can be used by many different people to achieve many different mischievous things even, or even exploit you in a way, right? So data has become a big thing. The second thing is artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence is really around using different inputs of data to then learn what a person's behavior is going to be and put that into a machine and the machine can respond mm -hmm. on behalf of the process as if it was a human being. So we're creating robots out of machines and those robots must think like human beings. So that, in a nutshell, is what 4IR is really about. It's about creating or using the information age that we're in in order to evolve into a more autonomous world. Self-driving cars, mm. uh, your fridge ordering its own groceries on your behalf while you're at work without you knowing, your phone telling you that it's gonna take you so long to get to your next destination even before you leave. So somehow they know mm. that's what you need to do. That's what 4IR is about, right? Again, it's about buying you time. You don't have to think about putting that GPS um, instruction for you to get to your next destination. It's already there. I guess what makes it very fearful for everyone is we're so used to doing these things ourselves. We've become human doings. We're so used to doing them. We're so used to, um, I work at a till, till point and someone's gonna come with their grocery and I'm going to scan it for, for them and that doing in itself has become my job. And so if 4IR is going to replace all of this, what is it that I am going to do, to do in order to make a living? And that's where the fear comes from. But if we actually flipped it around and said, actually, what is the purpose of me being alive as a human being? Uh -huh. Why am I alive? I'm alive because I'm gifted, I've been given um, great godly gifts and I used to I need to use these in order to make this world a better place right and by so doing it means I will find value in doing what my purpose really is is for or is about and others will find value and when other people find value in what I do because it's aligned to who I am I don't have to worry about making a living because they will pay for the value they get. Because they're getting what you are here for exactly. and paying for what they want. Exactly. With that said, we'll go to a break. Um, you do allow me, right? I do, I do, yes. <laughs> Viewers at home, do stay tuned for more with Mangaliso Jamani on The Marketplace with Charles. Join Marketplace with Charles on an 11-day tour of the Holy Land. Take the route Israel traveled to the Promised Land. Cross over the Red Sea and float on the Dead Seas, the lowest point on Earth with amazing healing properties. Experience the vibe of Jericho and cruise on the Sea of Galilee to Capernaum, the hometown of Jesus. Visit the pools of Bethesda, Nazareth, Bethlehem, and many more. Walk where Jesus walked and see the Bible come alive. If beautiful memories and an enriched spirit is what you are looking for, then join us in taking Jesus to the marketplace. For more information, call us on plus two seven seven two. 123-0078 or email israel at artofskincare.co.za 
It's a total pleasure to welcome you back. Thank you for staying tuned. I am still here today on the marketplace with Mr. Mangaliso Jamani. Mangaliso, you've just simplified for our for me. I hope for many other viewers as well. Being in the technology space, I think you were the correct person to pose this question to. When did being in business move to being so hugely linked to moving from one invention to another, one invention to another. We're looking at this item, now there's that. We're looking at this solution. When, how, why? Human beings are interesting creatures. Um, I, and I'll link this to, you know, what I believe we were created for and what God actually wanted us to, to, to be able to do as human beings. Um, when, when he says, you know, we are created in his image after his likeness. In other words, we look like him and we behave like him or we are able to do things like him. So we actually can create and we constantly are in a pursuit of um, improvement or making it better or getting better and better at something, right? So the fall of man stripped us of our godly um, initial purpose mm -hmm. and therefore we had we have to rediscover what that is. So all the new inventions that we are finding are really taking us closer and closer and closer to who we really are. Back in the days, in fact, I, I strongly believe that when Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden, if they wanted to be in America, in a different context, continent, yes. they wouldn't need an aeroplane to get there. They would easily get, get there. there. <laughs> now, We've created aeroplanes in order for us to get to America and it takes us about 17 hours, right? Mm -hmm. and, and constantly we're looking for quicker and cheaper ways to move around the world, even move to Mars. Mm -hmm. uh, you just learned about uh, Elon Musk launching you know, a space shuttle yeah. after so many years in America. And it's all in the pursuit of looking for things to make life better. And people may ask, why? Are we so fixated with um, astronomical um, inventions and pursuits and w like what are we doing on Mars? Why would we go to Mars? Like what's in Mars? Why? For us to understand that unfortunately after the fall of man, Earth became, became a limited um, resource environment. We have limited resources on Earth. The more people we have on Earth, the less resources we are going to have. We are consuming. That's, that's what we are as human beings. We consume a lot. And so the pursuit for other worlds and other planets is to try and find resources. So with that pursuit comes a lot of automation of many things. Where is this automation heading to, in fact? So if I think about it, um, Jesus Christ tried to explain what it means to be a child of God. And he had a number of analogies that he used to present um, he called them parables and the one time he was speaking in the book of Matthew uh, 25 verse 40 he, he says the kingdom of God is like you know so he's describing what the mm -hmm. kingdom of God looks like and he says it's like a man that is wealthy and he takes a trip and it's a long trip it's a trip uh, God knows what he was going to do there but this man is going to take a trip. He calls three of his servants and he says, I'm going away. Now, while I'm gone, I want you to do business. So he gives each of them bags of talent. So to one he gave five bags, to the other he gave two bags, and the other he gave one bag. Now, a talent um, back then is a bag of gold. And you could equate the bag of gold to about 457 thousand okay. dollars so in each bag there was about let's say yeah. rounded off five hundred thousand dollars now he says do business until I come till I return when I return I will ask you to account to me now I remember growing up in Sunday school we were told this talent referred to your gifts and your ability but actually no it was it was a teaching about managing money and business is about managing money you do things in order to generate money. The word of God in that Matthew 25 verse 14 scripture, you know, describes these three with particular attitudes. It says the first one immediately went and traded with it. Okay. 
trading his business, he's doing yes. business. So he immediately went and traded with it. So he, he battered, he sold things, he bought things, he sold things, and he made more. He made five other talents, right? So two and a half million grew to five million. The second one also did the same, traded with it, but did not do it immediately. In other words, this one probably thought about it first and said, what might I do, mm. right? Equally so, he made two more talents. Okay. The third one took it and dug it into a hole and hid it. When the master returned, he called them over to account and say, what is it that they've done? Um, the three you know, pr produced their five and said, look, I've done five more. And the master said, well done, good and faithful servant. So the reason why we exist is for us to be called good and faithful servants afterwards, having done trading with what we've been given to our hands. The second one did the same, presented there too, and the master said, well done, good and faithful servant. The one that did not do anything presented the one talent that was given to him. And the master said, why did you do this? And the, the, this one's response was, I know, or I knew then that you are a hard man, right? Mm -hmm. So let's liken the master to God. Yeah. So he was responding to God saying, I know that you are a very hard mm -hmm. person to please. It's difficult to please you. Sure. And imagine how we as Christians feel like it is difficult to please God. In other words, this one was saying, out of my own power, it's impossible to please you. Of course, we know that it's mm -hmm. impossible to please yeah. God. So he's saying, you are a hard man and I can't please you. And then he said, you reap where you have not sown. In other words, you take from everyone where you have not put in, in order to grow. You, you put no effort to making things happen, but you take from everyone. And then, and then the master responded to him and said, you are a, a bad, unfaithful servant. You are wicked. Call them wicked. Now imagine God has given us so much to do and we are not serving. serving, we're not making use of what we are given. The, re the answers for this world actually lie with us who know the truth. The advancements in technology should be spearheaded by people who are of moral character, who are of the kingdom of God. And we have to be immediate about our response. We, we shouldn't be led by the world, but we should be leading the world. You know, there's another scripture that says, in this generation, the children of the darkness are much wiser than the children of the light. You know, that scripture bothers me a lot. It is bothersome. Because I have God in my life, but the scripture is saying that in this generation, right? It was also a parable that Jesus was telling. In this generation, as a child of God, if I'm unfaithful, I lose the opportunity to apply wisdom. And so we have to be leading in this. Technology, we have to be leading in business, we have to be leading in politics, we have to be leading in, in running the country. Uh, throughout these questions, I'm getting a sense that uh, you're very passionate about ca how Christians should be at the forefront of the technological advancements and how we are possibly not yeah. as much as we should be. So what role does your company play in helping us with this venture? Yeah, so I have actually created three wings to the company. The first one is the trading business, uh, so consulting, um, coming up with resources, finding people that are equipped to actually solve technology problems. So I resourced these two companies, um, big companies in the telecommunication space and the banking space. Or oh, the second piece really is about investment. Um, I have a passion for teaching about finance and personal finance and business finance. Um, that's a story for another day. But the third leg uh, really talks about developing people and society. Um, I strongly believe that if we match people's gifts, if we match people's capabilities, the experience with the business problems or op opportunities, we then can solve the problems because we are clear about what we can get from people and we're clear about what our gap is. And therefore, we can actually pull in technology in the gap and solve the problem. Mangaliso Jaman, unfortunately, we are out of time. We could have had this for another 
episode and more and more. But this, I'll just give you an opportunity though, um, before you leave, to give our audience contact details of how they can reach you if they need help with people, processes and technology. Fantastic. So you are able to reach me on Facebook, uh, my personal account, uh, Mangaliso Chamani. Um, you're also able to reach me uh, on email. Um, it's mangaliso at jamazizigroup.co.za. Well then, there you have it. That was my guest, Mr. Mangaliso Jamani. Let us meet again next week, same time, same place, for another power-packed episode of The Marketplace with Charles. And don't forget to view the repeat bright and early Wednesday morning on this very channel at 1 a.m. as you start the day. And to watch a repeat anytime you choose, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel for Marketplace, and that is called Charles Ngubeni. And I assure you that that is a decision you will not forget. Thank you so much for joining us again on The Marketplace with Charles Gubeni, brought to you by Art of Skin Care. Do remember to stay in touch, find our website charlesgubeni.com and on all our socials that is Charles Gubeni. Don't forget the underscore on Instagram and to get in touch with myself, Katie Ware, that is Facebook page, My Katie Speaks Life. Until next time, goodbye and God bless.